Hello everyone and welcome to part 5 of Separate Ways. So I looked up how many chapters this game has and it has about 7 chapters. So I would say we're probably looking at like 7 or 8 more videos. <laughs> because um, I'm still making my way through. I know that I said that the game initially is about 5 hours but I feel like it's probably longer than five hours, especially if you're doing request and treasure. So we're going to continue on our way, continue pushing forward. Um, we have to get out of the waterway and get back to the surface because we are heading to get the amber from Luis. But the only way to get the amber from Luis is to catch up with him and he's on the other side of the castle with Leon. So, let's keep going. So we have a request to fulfill that's only available down here. I thought it was about the but the Novistadors. I thought it was about them, but it's actually about another giant fish, kind of like the one that you can pick up for the merchant in the lake area, that request. So he's not actually in this area, like um, this area that we're walking through. I thought that he was, but he's actually in an area that becomes available once we drain the water. So let's go ahead and grab this treasure real quick, make sure that I didn't forget anything, and drain the water. Now that the water has drained, Ada is more willing to hop into it, but I understand. I mean, her dress is probably really expensive, and so are her boots, 
and I wouldn't want to jump into it because, like, most Resident Evil games, you don't know what's in the water. It could be, like, zombie sharks or giant alligators or, in the case of, like, um, the uh, arcade shooter uh, for the Umbrella Chronicles and, like, side stories and stuff, it could be, like, a giant zombie snake or something. Who knows what's in that water? So the map was showing that if we keep going that way, uh, we'll get out of the waterway area and we don't want to leave just yet. There's some treasure that I wasn't able to pick up because the gate was locked. So I'm going to make my way over there and climb up the ladder and pick it up. And also any resources because like I said, I don't think that we're going to come back to this area i think once we leave it that's it we can't we can't go back down the elevator or anything like that um as far as i know anyway you know sometimes you can go back to the area like the island there were parts of the island that you can go back to but once you reach a specific point uh you weren't allowed to go back so we're going to make the most of it and make sure we get everything
So the fish is uh, down this way. So there's like a little offshoot over here um, that he kind of hangs out around. He swims around it. Uh, if you pick him up, you're going to have to make space in your inventory for him. I don't know if you can send him to your short, to your uh, storage, but it would be interesting if you could because then you can just sell it at the next merchant instead of having to go back like I did. But I decided to just do a little bit of a transition here just so I can go ahead and sell him and any other, other treasures that I've picked up that are ready to be sold and just get it done. So I know I've been buying a lot of those small keys every time that I trade with the merchant and that's just because I figured that the small keys are probably important to just go ahead and pick up um, because we had a small locked drawer here, there was one in the castle, there was one, there was like at least two or three in the village. And so I really don't want to be caught unawares um, and miss out on treasure because I didn't have the key to do so and I wouldn't be able to get the key to do so because I didn't do these requests and get uh, spinels. Will that be all then? Hope to see you again soon. Thanks for the directions, Luis. So, since we got out of the waterway, Luis is helpful enough to let us know that we're almost to uh, a place where we can get up to the surface. And at least we don't have to go down like a minecart road and do all the other stuff that Luis and Leon have to do. But uh, with the amount of supplies that they're giving us, it definitely means that we're going to be seeing like a lot of enemies. 
So if you haven't already, go ahead and refill on all of like your ammo if you can. Uh, craft some more ammo. Uh, definitely there's like handgun ammo and like other things inside the boxes. And just kind of try to be as quiet as you can because once you come this way, the gate's going to close. And you're going to find out that there's uh, one of those guys in here. Okay, so let's try again. We're going to get rid of uh, the blind enemy first, the more annoying of it. While, yes, he will take out my enemies for me by running into them and smacking them if they talk or make any noise. Um, I don't want to have to deal with him on top of, like, the spider enemies and the regular enemies. I just want to go ahead and just get rid of them, and that way I can be as loud as I want.
I really don't like that during this fight, those little spider creatures appear. <laughs> and I'm just like, look, please, I just want to, to get rid of this guy right here and, like, keep going. I don't want to have to worry about uh, you guys as well. But at least the, <laughs> the enemy took him out, so I don't have to worry about it. So we're going to hit him one more time with our blast arrow and... Then I think we have one more hit to go, and then that's going to do it. I think he's going to die, and then we don't have to worry about it anymore. So we're going to do a little bit of a restock, but um, I forgot to talk about the note we came across when we were still in the main part of the castle. So in the base game, you get a series of diary entries from a man who eventually turns himself into the Verdugo that you fight as Leon. But before he does that, he does a bunch of different experiments, uh, creating different creatures like the Novistadors and stuff like that, and eventually moves up to experimenting on humans, and one of which is a maid. So this maid is, I believe it's implied that she is someone who was very close with the Salazar family, because she probably helped raise Ramon as a child. But when things started to get really weird with the parasites and stuff, she decided that it would be best for her to run. And you've seen like other people talk about, oh, I need to run, but they end up being captured and things like that. So they end up becoming experiments and stuff. So uh, he experiments on her and eventually turns her into Pacenta, the Hound of Lord Salazar, as a punishment, basically. And then he uses her to hunt down people who run away from the castle. And then eventually he uses that research to turn himself into a Verdugo, and they both serve Lord Salazar.
while you can. Welcome. Stranger. Ooh, I'll pay a pretty penny. Good luck to you, stranger. Try that on for size. There you are. As you wished. Wielding, what can I do you for? Pleasant travel. Just doing some last minute checks before we move on to the next area. It sounds like we're about to fight Pacenta for the third time. I don't know if we're going to see her again afterwards. Hopefully this is the last time we fight her, but it's a Resident Evil game, so sometimes you end up fighting the same monster like four times before finally they give up the ghost and you can stop having them chase after you. to end this for good. So, cool intro aside, I feel like this is a little bit easy? Like, look, don't clown on me because I'm, like, getting hit and taking damage and have to heal myself, like, a few times during this fight. But it does feel like this one is way easier than the Verdugo fight, which was, like, 30 to 40 of my minutes, uh, minutes of my life that I'll never get back. And I know with that fight, you can just escape. You can just go into the elevator like five minutes in and it's fine. Everything's fine. But with this one, um, there's like, you can't really escape. There's no way for you to escape. So you have to face them uh, in order to get the parasite out of Ada's body. But this fight feels, I don't know, it just feels easy. And I wonder if it's just gonna gear up to like a second um stage because some bosses have more than one stage this one 
feels like it's going to be a Mendez and it's going to you defeat her first time and then after you defeat her uh she turns into like a centipede or something <laughs> and then watch me eat those words and yes she does turn into a centipede <laughs> Look at me being right, <laughs> but really, um, when you like are a Resident Evil fan and you've played the games, watch the CGI movies, and you know, you you know when a boss is gonna have more than like one mode. You kind of get like the sense, and I got the sense that she probably had more than one mode, given that she has like a scorpion tail, so she's essentially like a centaur, but. Yeah, I do feel like, even though she has two modes, that these two modes are a little bit easier than the Verdugo fight that you do as Leon. And that might just be because she doesn't have the hard carapace that the Verdugo does, and I think it's just because her job is to immobilize people. So when she infects you with the parasite, she'll just hunt you down and out of fear, people will cower, you know, they'll get stopped by when she roars and stuff like that. They'll freak out. And so it's easy to drag them back to the castle or just kill them then. But people like Ada and Leon, they're not going to stop when <laughs> something weird is happening because they've basically trained their whole lives to deal with threats like this. So, yeah, I feel like the reason why she feels easy is just because of that. Just because the Verdugo that we did fight was so covered in, like, carapace. The only place that we could hit that would actually deal any effect on him was his face. And even that was fairly hard. You know, we had to bring some, like, extra firepower just to do so. But with this one, I can probably kill her fairly easy. Even though, like I said, don't clown on me. Even though... I'm getting hit and have to heal myself a few times. I'm pretty sure we can take her out.
trouble here. Ada! A bad guy. Krauser, just store the amber. Leon's fighting him now. I'm on my way. I'm sorry. I'm not going to make it. I'll send you my files. They should help. The Amber, Luis. Where is it? Thank you for the chance to do good again. What are you saying? I'm grateful. Like I said, I'm just your good old Semedito. <laughs> How about you help me on when I'm gone, eh? Speaking of... Uh, uh, sounds like he needs me. Leon! Leon, there's only time to say this once, so listen up. They took your friend to the top of the clock tower. If you hurry, you might get there before she turns into one of them. Ah, uh, so you aren't heartless after all. I guess I should be thankful? Yeah, you should. I mentioned in the main game how much I liked uh, Luis's character um, and the changes that they did to him because he's still the same person from the original. Uh, even though I called him a stereotypical like Spanish man because he really was a stereotypical Spanish man and that's probably just because it was the 2000s, the early 2000s. So if you watch movies from back then or play games from back then, it, people of color really were kind of like token stereotypical versions of themselves. And I'm kind of glad that we're moving away from that um, because we're, as a culture, just as people are wanting more from like characters that are in our movies and our games. But Luis's uh, character in the original pretty much only lasted until like partway through the beginning part of the castle. Um, when you as Leon find Ashley, she's chained up on the wall. And so you are shooting off the locks while like cultists and stuff like that are appearing in the room. And when you uh, free her and she meets up with you on the second level, uh, Luis shows up, you know, with his cure to help uh, with the parasites, but Sadler ends up killing him, and that's when you meet Sadler for the first time, not when you get to the island uh, in this game, in the remake. So that's only, like, the very beginning, you know? <laughs> and then, um, but for this one, he lasts uh, so much longer. He's basically with us through the entire castle, all the way up to this part where he, you know, dies, not because he ran into a room at the wrong time and Sadler basically kills him, but because he's trying to help Leon uh, 
survive against uh, Krauser because Leon was not prepared for Krauser to be there. So yeah, I, I really like the change that they did to his character and I just want to say it again. I just want to give that character as much love as I can because he's, he's so well written this time around. Good luck to you. So once you turn on the traps, uh, you're going to want to attach your thermal scope to your rifle. You're not necessarily going to need the thermal scope like currently uh, for some of the hidden bug requests because two of them are really easy to spot. But the third one is kind of hard. The third one is on the castle wall. He's at the very top, so you would need your scope just to see him up there. But the other two are, one's here, I just killed it, and then when you go straight ahead through the next set of pounders, uh, there's a stairs that goes up to the exit. The other one is over there, he's on the ceiling, but you can't see him from the, from the bottom of the stairs, you have to go to the top to see him. But while you're here, make sure that you grab any treasure um, and sell it to the merchant. You can sell it now or you can wait until you get to the next area where the merchant can be and then sell it there. But any like upgrades, any weapon, ammo, anything like that that you may need, go ahead and grab it because after this, we're done with the castle. We're not coming back here. We're going on to the island. So just like with uh, the last area of the waterway, make sure that you get everything that you need before we uh, leave.
lights out. It's done. I don't think I've ever seen a cultist throw a scythe at me like a boomerang. I think that that's pretty cool that they have those clauses where the developers are like, if the enemy can't reach Leon or Ada, throw the weapon at them to kind of catch them off guard and then, you know, attack them. But, you know, <laughs> I don't think I've seen it in the base game though. I may have. I may have seen it, but I just. I didn't comment in it on the time, but a lot of people are throwing things at you, so I probably just missed it. But with that being said, we're near the end of our video. I'm going to let the rest of this play through, but I just want to say thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm really enjoying the game so far, like I said. If you want to watch more of Resident Evil playthroughs, we have Resident Evil 4 Remake playthrough that's available on the channel. I also play through Resident Evil 8. I may do the DLC for Resident Evil 8 as well because that came out like this year um, if you want to see it uh, and then we also have like a bunch of other games indie games uh, mainline like AAA games those types of deals on our channel so check it out but I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Krauser has possession of the Amber. You continue to disappoint me. I'll have it back before long. See that you do. The mission must proceed as planned. Understood. Gotta keep the client happy.